there, Cthulhu. Greetings, Cabaret Lab. My name is Tim Mendes. Today I'm going to read for you my story, Karma Has Teeth, from the Nocturnal Sirens Publishing Anthology, Scary Snippets, Sibling Edition. Karma Has Teeth. Everybody in town knew my Aunt Elsie. If not by name, then definitely by sight. She had a shock of white tufty hair and a hunched posture that suggested to some of the more superstitious types that she was a witch. This had a twofold effect. Firstly, the kids at school teased me for having a witch in the family. But secondly, if the teasing got too much to bear, I could ward them off with threats that Elsie would turn them into toads. Nobody in school wanted to be a toad. One Easter, I had been left with my Auntie Elsie and Uncle Jack while my parents went gallivanting around Europe for work. I wasn't too put out by this, as I found Jack and Elsie to be great hosts. I'd been having a nice couple of weeks, but one afternoon, things took a decidedly darker turn. Now, I hated P.E. with a passion, and I would go to extreme lengths to avoid slipping on those hideous nylon shorts. That day was scheduled to be the dreaded cross-country run, and it was hammering it down with icy rain, so I had absolutely no desire to compete. Time had been running out, so I fell back on an old favourite, the old fingers-down-the-throat routine. Worked a treat. Always did. I was sent home. At first, I didn't think anybody was in. The curtains were drawn, and no light was visible through the crack. I put my key in the lock and let myself in. As I stepped inside and kicked off my shoes, I was immediately hit by a strange smell. It stank like the festering swamp behind the river camel, mingled with something altogether worse. It smelled, in short, like an abattoir. Through the living room door, I could hear my auntie. She was chanting in an identifiable language. It was a jumble of guttural syllables and high-pitched ululations. As fear crept down my spine and sent shivers along my arms, I cautiously opened the door and pushed it slowly ajar. Auntie! I yelped as I took in the scene. The floor was covered in a plastic sheet with the kitchen table in the centre and thick black candles flickering away on top. Auntie Elsie was clad in a strange crimson robe and held a struggling chicken by the neck in one hand and a dagger in the other. A bucket brimming with blood sat next to a pile of twitching avian corpses. Elsie's head snapped in my direction. Tony! She barked, her eyes burning from underneath the hood. Her face was contorted into a mask of surprise, anger and guilt. She stopped chanting, and her grip on the unfortunate fowl faltered. It struggled free in a plume of feathers, and started racing around the room, clucking furiously. Grab the chicken! She shrieked. It has to be thirteen. The tribute demands thirteen, or they will come. What the hell's going on? I asked in shocked tones. My feet felt like they had taken root. Who's they? No time to explain, she panted. Help me catch the chicken. There was no way in hell that I was going to be party to the ritual slaughter of poultry. I moved my mouth to argue, but no sounds would come out. My mouth had turned dry with terror. And my tongue felt sticky and swollen. I tried to swallow, but my throat would not comply. Fear had struck me dumb. As I stood frozen in horror, the chicken burst from the kitchen and hurtled in my direction. I screamed and dived out of the way. My left shoe connected with the tin pail and tipped it over, splashing sticky, warm blood all over the plastic sheet. It ran in thick rivulets and pooled around the legs of the table. No! My auntie screamed. Get out before it's too late. Before I could ask her what she meant, the cat flap clattered furiously. As I backed towards the door, followed by the petrified chicken, a line of large, warty toads came hopping into the room. Run! Elsie screamed, 
I turned to flee, but the chicken was between me and the door. I couldn't get the door open. I kept whacking the chicken. As I tried to move the chicken aside, one of the toads leapt across the room and clamped its mouth over the chicken's head. It was then that I noticed that these particular toads had teeth. Rows and rows of nasty, pointy teeth. With a disgusting snap, the toad bit off the chicken's head and swallowed it in one gulp. As the headless body clattered around the room, I turned and saw the rest of the horde advancing on my auntie with evil intentions. Joe, it's me they want. Why? What did you do? I asked as I fumbled with the door. They haven't always been toads. They want revenge. She swiped at the toads with the dagger. It was no good. They would be on her in a second if I didn't act. It didn't matter what she had done. She was still my auntie. I grabbed the broom from behind the door and attacked the toads, herding them back towards the kitchen. They snapped and croaked, their evil little eyes glowing red. As I battled them, Elsie started chanting again and righted the bucket. Before I could act, she had opened the wrists with the dagger and started to bleed herself into the pail. A gigantic toad materialised in the air and sucked up her life fluid. I couldn't take the horror. My knees buckled and I fell into a dead faint. When I awoke, the house was back to normal, except for the apparent suicide of my auntie. Uncle Jack never mentioned that day, but needless to say, the chicken dinners we had for the next month didn't get down very well. Thank you very much. That was my story, Karma Has Teeth, from the Nocturnal Sirens Anthology, Scary Snippets Sibling Edition. My name is Tim Mendes. Hope you enjoyed what you've seen. Enjoy the rest of the show, people.